So what do we have for today? You are looking at my latest uh, Goodwill purchase. This is the Symphonic um, DVD CD player, a cheap one, very light one, but one that is actually kind of great. So this particular DVD CD player was manufactured in 2004. This one is model number WF104. But this exact player was also uh, sold under the model number SD200E. So uh, you could also look it up under that model number as well. I believe that they are identical units. Uh, the only difference I could really see is the, um, the owner's manual is just slightly different, just basically formatted just a little bit different. But I can't tell any difference between the models. So if you haven't heard about the company, Symphonic, it started in 1981 and basically manufactured a number of electronics, including VCRs, DVDs, and TVs, and basically was fairly successful uh, until the 1990s and early 2000s when it kind of hit some financial difficulties and the name essentially died out. Somewhere along the line, I believe a company called uh, Funya Corporation uh, either purchased them or it was an offshoot of the company. And they basically manufactured uh, the Symphonic brand in the 90s and early 2000s. And actually this exact same unit after the Symphonic name died out, this exact same unit uh, was sold in 2006 uh, under the Funia uh, SV2000 brand name, and that model number would be WV205. So Funio also manufactured basically this exact same DVD player for Magnavox in 2005 under the model number MSD115. And really the only difference in that was the front cover, as you can see here. And there are many, many other models that I sort of came across that looked very similar to this and were probably manufactured by Funio for other companies. Basically, this exact same little cheap DVD. Now, I do have the remote to this unit, and the model number for this particular remote is NB050, but uh, there's also another remote with model number NB000, which also works for this player. Now, although you can play DVDs and CDs without the remote, really you have limited options with regards to functionality. Uh, you can open and close the door here. You can uh, hit play, stop and on and off power. So that's basically all you can do. So in the back, you do have a variety of outbound signal jacks. You have your, um, you have your coaxial jack right here. You have your audio stereo jacks here. So you have your white and red plugs right here. And then you have your um, AV uh, video jack right here. You also have a S video jack right here. And on the bottom, you do have a couple of informational stickers here, serial number, etc. model number, you could see the model number here, WF104. Also, the model number is displayed on the other one, and you can see that this particular one was manufactured August 2004. Now, I did do some research on the other model number, the SD200 E model number and that was actually manufactured about the same time. I found some units that were before August 2004 and some after. So I'm not quite sure why they had two model numbers. If you know, please uh, put some comments below to let me know. I also came across an advertisement that basically advertises this unit as a entry level DVD CD player. Now, although it is the case is pretty much plastic, it does seem like it's well manufactured and the quality of the video and the uh, menu options are actually pretty darn good. And I'll demonstrate that now. Okay, so I did plug it into the TV and turned on the TV as you can see here. And so we'll just go ahead and take the remote uh, for the DVD and hit power. You'll see the little uh, power indicator light go on right there. So we'll go ahead and hit that. 
and then you can see that this signal is from the DVD player. It's telling me it does not have a DVD currently in place, which is fine. And so the first thing I want to do is just to show you the setup button right here. So this is basically the DVD kind of main menu. So if we hit the setup, you can see there's some setup options. There's a quick setup, the customize, and then initialize. So if we go ahead, uh, there's up and down buttons here and an enter. If we go ahead and hit enter for quick uh, setup, you can see that there's various uh, options here. Play menu, uh, go into that one. You can see it's just a setup for the different languages. It gives you three different options, French, uh, Spanish, and English. We'll keep it at English. And then the TV aspect is the next. Uh, we got the letterbox, the plain scan, and then the 16 by nine wide uh, widescreen. We'll, we'll keep it on the letterbox for now. And then Dolby uh, digital sound on or off. Uh, we'll keep it on on. And then we'll just go ahead and hit return to get back to the previous menu. Okay, so going down to the custom uh, setup, you just uh, start off with languages. Uh, you could actually select different, let's say audio. Uh, if the CD has a different languages on it, uh, English, French, etc. Uh, you could select which uh, version you want. We'll just go ahead and hit return. Also, subtitles on and off, uh, either English, French, etc. We'll go ahead and keep it as off. Uh, disc menu, you can have it as uh, different languages, English, um, French, etc. Again, uh, and also the player menu, you can have those in various languages as well. So next up is display. You could set the display uh, either for letterbox, as you can see here, uh, or uh, pan and scan, or the wide 16 by nine ratio. St uh, still modes, uh, auto, field, or frame. You have uh, angle icon on or off, or auto power on or off. And then the audio uh, menu also has a variety of options. You can uh, select on or off. And then the parental control is basically if the uh, DVD, you know, let's say is rated R or, or like, you can have parent control. So in this case, I'll just put for the entry code, uh, four digits, one, two, three, four. It just says, don't forget your password. I'll hit enter. And then you can uh, select which type of rating is allowed without the uh, code. So we'll hit enter. And then you can select either all NR17 rated R, PG13, PG, or G, etc. We'll just keep it as all. And then I could hit change password. I'll just keep it the same. There you go and then return. And then the initializing uh, setting there, I think that's just kind of uh, bringing it back to the defaults of uh, everything. So we'll just keep that unchanged. And that was the, the setup button. Now, before I put a DVD in the machine, I just do want to show you all the buttons associated with the remote. Each one of them has uh, different functions and there's a lot of stuff this DVD can do. And you can see right here a little table that kind of tells you what all these buttons generally do. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and download the manual and uh, figure it out for yourself. Again, there's a lot of stuff this DVD can do. Okay, to insert the DVD, we can just hit this little up, open or close button here. Again, there is also a button on the remote. And so we can just go ahead and reopen it like that. Go ahead and place in the DVD. Close it up. And then it should start reading the DVD. You can see it is seeing it and it's starting to read it. You can hear the DVD uh, working. It's a little loud, but, and here it is. The DVD starts to play. And you can see, uh, at least on this small little TV, that it seems like it's a really nice image.
Okay, so here's the main menu for the DVD. Let's go ahead and turn down the sound so we can kind of hear myself here. And then we'll just use our remote to hit play and see what it can do there. Okay, so with the movie starting, I do want to highlight this display button on the remote. So if I hit the display button, you'll see a little uh, indicator up here that displays uh, the current chapter. That's uh, the film is playing. It's currently on one of 28. And this is the time that has elapsed so far in the chapter. And this is the remaining time in that chapter. If I were to hit display again, this is the title display. And so there's one out of 29 different titles. This is the time that's elapsed and the remaining amount of time. So this, I think this actually shows the chapters and this is the whole title, the movie. So it's an hour, basically two hour movie. And you can see the countdown if you want that displayed. The next one is basically kind of a bit rate indicator. It kind of tells you um, the amount of AV data that is currently being utilized. Currently it's low. I think if there's a lot of data being uh, uh, displayed, this will go up as uh, appropriate. Hit display again and, and the display goes away. I also want to show that there is a search mode button here. You can, uh, uh, you can search based on chapters. So if I hit search like that, you can see it shows two bars with 28. I can go to chapter two and just hit enter like this and it'll immediately go to chapter two. I could also just hit the uh, numbered keys. Like if I wanted to go to chapter four, I could just hit that and it'll automatically go to chapter four. If I hit the um, search function again, uh, twice, it'll actually allow me to select which title I want. So we can uh, go, to, go to the title. Actually, this, uh, this one only has one title, so that won't work. But if I go to the next one, it you can actually put in uh, the time in the movie. So there's two hours and one minute in this movie. I can go ahead and fast forward, essentially one hour, 55 minutes. And then that will zoom me ahead to near the end of the movie. And there you have there. And then I could just uh, go back to chapter two if I want. So a couple of other cool buttons here is the repeat button. So there's a repeat here and there's an AB, which is also related to a repeat button. So if I were to hit repeat button here, you can see the, uh, it says currently off. But if I were to hit it twice, it says chapter and now it's set. So at the end of the chapter, it will repeat the chapter. So it will go to the beginning of the chapter again. You can also set it to title repeat and I'll do the same thing for the entire title. Currently, we'll go ahead and turn it off. So for the AB repeat, it basically uh, you designate a point in, in the movie like right here and then you I will hit it once just like that. It says A and it will remember that point in the movie. So if I went ahead and fast forward the movie, again, I could hit, I could actually hit different speeds of fast forward up to four, and you can see it's fast forwarding. I'll go ahead and just hit play. And if I hit uh, the AB repeat button again, and now I'll say AB, and now it's back to the original point which I actually uh, designated on the AB repeat button. So that's kind of a cool feature. So along with just selecting which chapters uh, I want to watch, like with just the number kit, uh, buttons, I could also just hit the skip buttons here, which will just kind of fast forward me from one chapter to another. I could also go backwards uh, in chapters as well. So I could do it either way. Again, I want to highlight the image. The image looks really clear and, and crisp. It is a small screen. I have played this on a larger screen and it's just as crisp. I do have a much more expensive DVD and even Blu-ray player. And just for DVD playing alone, it does as well as those more expensive players. And so for the price, even though it's quote entry level, it really gives you everything you need in a DVD player. 
I haven't demonstrated the CD uh, quality. You can plug it into, let's say, an amplifier system with speakers, etc., and play uh, CDs as well. So that's really nice. But uh, for such a cheap little uh, unit, it's actually pretty durable. You can uh, transport it really easily, uh, unplug it. It's really light. Uh, unlike some bigger, more expensive units, if you kind of move it around, I don't think this is going to break that easily. So I'd be more reluctant moving a more expensive unit. Uh, but this one, I think, would do really well in transport. And there you go. That is the Symphonic DVD CD player model number WF104. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will have many more videos to come. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.